Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's debate. My name is Elijah Ainsbury, and I'm the chairman, and Ilya Aileen is the prime keeper. The adjudicator is Mr. Hazel. The topic of this debate is that dumpster diving should be discouraged. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Pembroke School. The negative team seated to my left is from Emmanuel College. The speaking time for this debate is five minutes. A single warning bell will sound one minute before the speaking time. And a double bell will sound at the speaking time. A continuous bell may be rung 30 seconds after the speaking time, in which case the speaker must sit down immediately. Please ensure that your mobile phones and other electronic devices are switched off. I declare this debate open and call upon the first affirmative speaker, Conrad Sosman. Good afternoon, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. The topic for tonight's debate is that dumpster diving should be discouraged. As the affirmative, we strongly believe this. We define a dumpster as a container used for holding waste, such as food waste or material waste. We define diving as a means of submerging oneself into something, in the context of this debate, into a container of waste. We define dumpster diving as an activity pursued by people to save, retrieve food and objects to help others for personal gain and for profit. We define should used to integrate obligation, usually influenced by an action. We define discouraged as to not recommend and to try and prevent. Hence, the topic for tonight's debate is that submerging oneself into a container used for holding waste ought to not be recommended. We also recognise that dumpster diving can involve people from all walks of life including people below the poverty line and people with a social media following. There are a range of reasons that people dive into dumpsters. As first speaker, I will talk to you about the health implications involved with dumpster diving. I will also explain the privacy issues and legal concerns involved with dumpster diving. Our second speaker, Kai, will explain alternatives to dumpster diving, how we should manage real issues such as homelessness and unemployment, and how it creates a class divide. Our third speaker, Nicholas, will rebut the negative and sum up our team's case. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a risky behaviour, but we are not talking about banning or criminalising this activity. We are simply saying it should not be encouraged. There is an important difference. My first argument is about the clear physical and health hazards of diving into a dumpster. Dumpster divers risk contact with biohazards, broken glass, all kinds of waste and unsanitary conditions. Divers can also be seriously injured or even killed. Yes, you heard me correctly, killed. Alfonso de Bourbon in La Jolie was killed by a truck while dumpster diving last year. Shelley Bowman died in Detroit from dumpster diving. Jonathan Manley died in San Francisco in 2016 from dumpster diving. And another man was dumpster diving and was injected with heroin in Whitaker in February. The list goes on. These sad stories are not to dismiss the reasons why people dive into dumpsters. We know these are vulnerable people, but it shows why it must be discouraged for real life and death reasons. In Adelaide, your home city, one homeless woman told the Sunday Mail that there are risks with food being contaminated or spoiled by staff trying to stop dumpster diving. Another said, quote, a lot of places are putting bleach all over the food to stop dumpster diving. Even supermarkets discourage it due to health and safety risks involved. And according to Woolworth's Head of Sustainability, Adrian Cullen, it's safer for us to partner with hunger relief agencies so they can get edible food to those in need. My second argument involves the legal and privacy concerns. 
while the dumpster diving is not necessarily outlawed in all places, there can be criminal consequences. You can be charged with trespassing. There are legal issues about taking items that may still technically belong to a person who threw them away. This year, two German students were convicted of theft because they were dumpster diving. Cameron McLeish, a dumpster diver, writing in the Huffington Post, said, Although I'm a dumpster diver, I hope to see a time where I, find, where I struggle to find free, tasty and edible food being trashed and where dumpsters are reserved solely for actual waste. So ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, dumpster diving is dangerous, unhealthy, risky, sometimes illegal and potentially lethal. It should always be discouraged. Don't be down in the dumps, and especially don't be down in the dumpster. <laughs> Thank you. Call upon the first negative speaker, Jamie Campbell. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for this debate is that dumpster diving should be discouraged. We, we agree with the definition presented by the affirmative, however, however, firmly disagree with the stance taken on the issue. Now I'd like to take care of some flaws in the first affirmative speech. We understand that um, there are risks taken uh, while dumpster diving, but people make that choice. And some people may not have a choice but to do that. And so, also concerning privacy, the stores throw out that stuff. They don't need it anymore. So why bother what people are, are taking? Now to outline what the negative team will present. As first speaker, I will introduce our case by discussing the good that dumpster diving creates and explaining how it assists the underprivileged in gaining access to otherwise difficult to attain resources. Our second speaker will be talking about the problems we currently face that seek to benefit from the adoption of dumpster diving, touching on how it will assist waste, waste issue and will explain how dumpster diving will 
fix some of the gaps left behind by inefficient government and private organisations. Our third speaker will rebut and sum up our team case. Tonight I will be discussing one theme split into two points. There is no denying that even in a, in a wealthy nation like Australia, access to basic resources can be hard to come by for those at the bottom. While generally our social safety nets have proven effective, they have failed to account for all. To bring an example, as stated by the New South Wales government, the 1.5 million Australians facing food insecurity. Further, access to household goods can also be hard to come by for, come by for low socioeconomic families. You may be thinking, well, life is hard. There is not enough to go around. However, especially regarding food insecurity, we know that Australia produces enough food for upwards of 60 million people over 200% of our population taken from the Bureau of Trade. Worse yet, 20% of the food that remains in Australia works its way into our waste system, moving, moving through dumpsters on its journey. Ladies and gentlemen, if so much perfectly usable and safe food, much of which comes from restaurants, why should we be discouraging the use of this resource when it has the potential to enrich so many lives? Ladies and gentlemen, it simply does not make sense when we currently have 1.5 million people subject to food insecurity. Why are we removing a means for people to attain access to food? Our dumpsters are full of food. In just one dumpster analysed in food on waste, 78 portions of healthy, well-packaged food were found. That's the days of 78 people made easy, easier by giving them access to food. For our underprivileged, for those that may not have the budget for a secure food budget, a resource that we need to survive, we strongly, strongly believe that cutting access to a free and plentiful resource is absurd. Next, I wish to touch on the household goods that dumpster diving could bring into the household of the needy. It is no secret that large quantities of perfectly functioning furniture end up in, in, the hard, waste, in, in hard waste once again often making it its way through dumpsters. According to Solar Waste Services, it's processed 3,000 tonnes of furniture in the past year. And that's just one company. On the other hand, these items, like bed frames, would serve wonders in homes. And not just furniture, printers and PCs, useful items that are difficult to budget for many families, can be taken from dumpsters and taken in by ever grateful homes. So, Ms. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I have started the case for the negative by outlining the roles we will play in our team case and move to explain the good dumpster diving brings, wrapping back around to the enormous missed opportunity this disencouragement would bring to our communities. Ladies and gentlemen, in a world where so many don't have access to what they need, it is simply absurd to starve people the right to a diverse and plentiful resource. After all, we are creating good while incurring no debt to the bad. This is a rare opportunity for us to encourage an action that is skewed so good we ask why even consider discouraging it. Thank you.
call upon the second fellow speaker, Kai Speedy. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that dumpster diving should be discouraged. We, the affirmative team, strongly agree with the statement. The negative team has tried to tell you that dumpster diving helps food insecure people supplement their diet as a survival strategy. If people choose to dumpster dive to survive, then, as Peter Parker in the Local Environment article in 2014 states, that this is a very serious indictment on the state of our society and government, and meaningful and sustainable alternatives must be found quickly. Those 1.5 million people deserve alternatives such as food banks and so on, without the risk of danger. They've also said that dumpster diving helps prevent excess food wastage. It does help decrease food wastage, but it's not a long-term sustainable and safe way to achieve this goal. It only looks at one aspect of food wastage, according to author and food waste campaigner Tristan Stewart. The majority of wastage occurs up the supply chain, and I'll expand on this in my speech. In regards to furniture, this is a problem that should be dealt with in production rather than after it's been put in a dumpster. Our first speaker has already ex explained the risks and safety issues involved with dumpster diving, along with the privacy and legal issues. As a second speaker, I'll be talking to you about three points, focusing on the significance of the problems surrounding dumpster diving. Firstly, by allowing dumpster diving to proceed, it absolves the government from both acknowledging and providing solutions for why it's occurring. For example, the issues of food wastage and increasing rates of poverty, homelessness and equality in Australia are largely ignored. Food wastage. Paradoxically, cities in the developed world are simultaneously increasing levels of food wastage and food insecurity. Peter Parker, in his 2016 article in the Local Environment Journal, states this. Camila Pereira in The Guardian states that Australian households throw away $8 billion worth of edible food every year. Likely far worse if you add the value of food waste generated by commercial retailers. However, far more food waste actually happens up the supply chain. Tristan Stewart in his TED talk in 2012 on food waste states that farmers routinely throw away one third or more of their harvest for cosmetic reasons alone. 50% of commercial European fish catchers are thrown away for no good reason. 50%. Bread bakeries routinely discard 15,000 fresh cut slices a day. Parker also points out that most dumpster divers are uh, performed by food secure people who choose to dumpster dive for political activism or ideological reasons. What I'm trying to highlight here is that dumpster, dumpster diving is a symptom of a broken system. By discouraging it and highlighting the issue, we can start a national conversation to address the massive problem of food wastage and inequality. For those who live in poverty and who could be unemployed or homeless and dumpster dive just to survive, they deserve a more dignified way to obtain their food. They really do. And this brings me to my second point. The wastage described in my first point should no longer be tolerated. Consumers' attitude to slightly blemished, disfigured produce must change because we can no longer sustain a throwaway culture. At the moment, Australian supermarkets are not legally required to divert all excess food to charities. Food wastage is embedded in their business model. Pereira states in her Guardian uh, article that food waste costs the Australian economy $20 billion annually. This has incentivized the government, who are now developing legislation which aims to halve food waste. Details are not yet available, but this is an encouraging and very good start. Retailers must be forced to optimise the supply chain, except, except less than perfect produce and heavily discount produce approaching their expiry date. In Australia, we have the Civil Liability Amendment Act 2005, which protects businesses who wish to donate food to recipients. Provided the Business Act is in good faith, they are protected from any harm that may come to a recipient from consuming the donated goods. There needs to be more awareness regarding the Act, and possibly a more robust or enforceable law, so the businesses feel complied and protected to donate their world goods. My third and final point is that if we do not discourage this activity, there will be an increasing need for businesses to protect their property to mitigate against property damage, financial losses and public liability. Increasing security may be done in a number of ways, including fencing, guards, surveillance cameras, guard dogs and alarm systems, all of which come to a cost of the business and also may create situations that increase risk to dumpster divers. If this activity is not discouraged, who then becomes responsible for the inevitable injuries and to what extent will business owners be able to protect their property without fear of litigation? We've seen tragedy unfold even in South Australia. You may recall a young boy on Payward on the Adelaide Zoo fencing after trying to escape after trespassing there. 
If we permit dumpster diving, the cost will ultimately be borne by customers and the community around us in general, and increase risk to those partaking in the activity. So in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that dumpster diving should be discouraged because it is serving as a way to avoid real world issues that need real and sustainable solutions. Thank you. on the second negative speaker, Jaden Graham. Good evening, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. According to statistics from FoodWise, in Australia, 20% of food that is purchased is thrown away, equating to roughly 140 kilograms of food per person being sent to landfill unused every year. Today, I'll be speaking about wastage and its effect on people, societies, economies, and of course, the environment. In turn, explaining why dumpster diving should not at all be discouraged. But before I go into my points, there were some major flaws in the affirmative team's arguments that need to be discussed. The first speaker from the affirmative team has tried to tell you that it is a safer and more overall better option to partner with homelessness services than to dumpster dive. However, this is wrong because as I will explain in my second point, these current programs are not doing enough to fix these problems. They also said that dumpster diving creates health risks to people doing it. This is wrong, because as my third speaker will further explain, these risks do not stem from the activity of dumpster diving itself, but the behavior of these people taking part. Also, in one example brought up by the affirmative, not, not even because of the dumpster diver himself, but because of a truck that ran into it. Next, the, affirm, the second affirmative speaker suggested that, again, uh, food banks should be solving the problem of homelessness and food distribution to them. However, once again, I will be explaining why these programs are not doing enough to solve these issues in my second point. They also said that much of the world's food wastage comes from agricultural industries. However, these wasted items will not end up in dumpsters themselves and therefore are not related to this debate. 
and the topic of dumpster diving. Our first speaker has already gone into great detail to explain how the ability to dumpster dive is a great aid to the underprivileged, and that if this act were to be discouraged, it would make the lives of so many underprivileged people so much more difficult. However, dumpster diving and wastage not only have an impact on the underprivileged, they also have affect society as a whole. At the beginning of my speech, I said that statistics from Foodwise show that Australia, in Australia, 20% of food purchased is thrown away. A report by the South Australian Research and Development Institute calculated that the total amount of money lost due to this 20% food disposal rate was over $20 billion, a similar amount to the productivity losses due to traffic congestion. In a report by the Food and Agriculture Association, Organisation of the United Nations, it was stated, if food wastage were a country, it would be the third largest emitter of carbon dioxide, a major contributor to global warming. Not only this, but according to Foodwise, when decomposing at landfill, food waste also emits methane, another global warming con con contributing gas that is 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. As my first speaker explained, food is only a part of the waste problem. Clothes, furniture and other household goods also contribute to wastage. With all of these factors in mind, it isn't hard to deduce that if dumpster diving was to be discouraged, Fewer people would dumpster dive, resulting in more waste being left to remain unused, polluting the environment and wasting the time, money, effort and resources put into making these wasted products. As I mentioned earlier, statistics from Foodwise state that roughly 140 kilograms of food per person is thrown away every year in Australia. That equates to over 234 million kilograms of food wasted every year in South Australia alone. Food Bank is the largest food relief organisation in Australia who recover food that would otherwise go to landfill and distribute it to people in need, as the affirmative team has been talking about. An annual report in 2018 from Food Bank, South Australia, reported that it prevented over 2 million kilograms of food from being sent to landfill. This means that only 2 million out of the 234 million kilograms being wasted in South Australia is being saved. Ladies and gentlemen, the largest food relief organisation in Australia is only able to save less than 1% of food waste. In this report, Food Bank also stated that despite their efforts, more than 5,899 South Australians were unable to be assisted by the organisation each month, meaning every month there were almost 6,000 people deprived of the basic human need of food. With all of these people in need of food and so much free food being wasted and ending up in dumpsters, the most likely source of food for these people is obvious. Until food recovery programs are made more efficient and can meet the demands of these people that do not have adequate access to food, these people are forced to source their food from dumpsters. So, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, if dumpster diving were to be discouraged, underprivileged people would have no way of acquiring the food they need to survive. The opposition may try to say that this is why we have programs and systems in place to help these people, but look around. These charity programs and government systems are not working. We see desperate people in public all the time who rely on dumpster diving. And remember, it is not just the desperate that need dumpster diving. It is everyone. Dumpster diving is contributing to maintaining our economy, decreasing our environmental impact, and fixing societal problems like wastage and hunger. If dumpster diving is doing so much good and causing no harm, there is no reason whatsoever to discourage it. Thank you.
Colson the third, the primary speaker, Nicholas Sapskis. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of tonight's debate is that dumpster diving should be discouraged. We, the affirmative team, strongly believe this statement to be true. Now I'll point out some flaws in the opposition's arguments. The first speaker's rebuttal and the second speaker have also have mentioned that there are no alternatives to dumpster diving and that people may be forced into it. This, is, this statement may be partially true, however there are many alternatives. In the Adelaide CBD alone there are over 15 homeless shelters. Going to a homeless shelter is a very good alternative. Although this may not be viable for some, there is also Food Bank Australia that, and Oz Harvest. They are two of the main food redistribution places in Australia. Food Bank Australia have two main facilities in Adelaide and many pop-up stalls. These pop-up stalls and the main facilities are ready to distribute food to all those people in need. The first firm has also tried to tell you that food, that food is wasted and that people can use this waste. Yes, food is wasted. The United Nations has stated 1.3 trillion tonnes, however, of food that is wasted is not useful. These, the food that is useful is found in shop dumpsters. However, these shop dumpsters and the people that go looking in them could be subject to a hefty lawsuit. One example from the Washington Post reports that two men were charged with loitering, trespassing and prowling at night. These misdemeanours are in the third degree. These men were faced with one year jail time just for dumpster diving. The first of them has also mentioned that people can find furniture products in dumpsters. However, products like furniture and appliances are products for the home in a, are in a bin for a reason. These products can, products can be faulty. We don't want to be exposed to faulty products. They could blow up and, har and seriously harm someone. The second speaker has tried to rebut one of our speaker's arguments. However, our second speaker did not suggest that Food Bank should solve the problem. He spoke about the Amendment Act and how businesses should contribute. This, therefore, his rebuttal does not actually rebut the point. The second affirmative has also tried to tell you that dumpster diving stops food waste. This is incorrect. That although some, although dumpster diving may stop some food waste, there are not, there is nowhere near enough participants to make a major impact. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, 1.3 trillion tonnes of food is wasted. Not all of this waste is fit for consumption. For example, 50% of European fish, fish catches are discarded every year. Most of these products don't even make it off the farm, meaning that even though, much, even though two thirds of this food is edible, not enough people are dumpster diving to make an impact. They've also tried to tell you that dumpster diving will help the environment. It does, not, it does not help the environment because only a small portion of dumpster divers actually participate. Even though the waste goes to landfall, not enough CO2 is actually, not, nowhere, near enough, nowhere near as much CO2 is actually produced than in our everyday lives. When food is burned and in the dumps, and when food is burned, it emits the same amount, it emits even more than someone's daily drive to, less than someone's daily drive to work. They also spoken to you about food waste again. Some food products can't be stopped from turning into waste. One third of food waste is lost on farms. Therefore, food waste is not a viable option for food waste is not a viable option for dumpster divers. The second affirmative has also tried to tell you that, that dumpster diving will help maintain the economy. There aren't enough dumpster divers to make an impact on the economy, and dumpster diving wastes the government time which is detrimental to the economy, as the government cannot invest in other vital needs. Now to my summary. The topic of tonight's debate is that dumpster diving should be um, discouraged. We, the affirmative team, strongly agree with this topic. Our first speaker, Comrade, spoke to you about two points. His first point covered the physical and health hazards when it comes to dumpster diving. He spoke about biohazards and broken glass, and even some deaths. He then spoke about the legal and privacy consequences of dumpster diving stating that many people face prosecution and trespassing. Our second speaker, Kai, gave you three points. Firstly, that dumpster diving absorbs the government from both acknowledging and providing solutions for other major problems, such as food waste and homelessness. His second point covered the alternatives to dumpster diving, such as food banks. 
and the amendment act. His final point showed us how dumpster diving will, in will increase the need for businesses to protect their property to mitigate against property damage. That's why we, the affirmative team, strongly believe that dumpster, dumpster diving should be prohibited. Thank you. Call upon the third negative speaker, Noah Keane. Good evening, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, and honourable members of the affirmative team. We, the negative team, believe that dumpster diving should not be discouraged. One main theme throughout the opposing team's speeches has been that alternative solutions should be put into place to help the needy instead of them having to dumpster dive. However, this does not mean that dumpster diving should be discouraged, as, as my other speakers have mentioned time and time again, these alternative solutions are too little at the current moment. If we discourage dumpster diving in this time, then there simply aren't enough alternatives to keep many people afloat. Sure, dumpster diving can be discouraged in the future when these alternatives are sufficient to support the entirety of Australia. However, at the current moment, discouraging dumpster diving and taking it out of many un fortunate people's lives could provide serious consequences. Throughout his relentless optimism, the first affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that dumpster diving provides health risks to those involved. How could you believe this when the risks of dumpster diving do not come from the activity itself, but the behaviour of the diver? People dumpster diving can achieve the same goal and get, gain the same goods by taking a safer method of diving a dumpster. For example, only going at the top or taking your time. To dive a dumpster and gain the, reap the rewards that are inside, you do not have to plunge yourself headfirst into the dumpster and end up with a leg full of glass. If you are careful when going into a dumpster, you really shouldn't end up with a heroin injection. He also said dumpster diving causes legal issues and so is not recommended. This is incorrect as, as I said in my last point, the instances where dumpster divers were accused of thefts, staked by the affirmative team, could have been avoided if the divers had simply learned the laws around dumpster diving and trespassing. This is not the fault of the divers thems of dumpster diving itself, it's the fault of the divers for not taking proper precautions. This is also the fault of the legal system. If you don't want something and throw it away, why accuse someone of theft for gratefully taking it? The second firm speaker has tried to convince you that dumpster diving is a short-term solution to a long-term issue and should retrieve an alternatives. As I have previously stated, the issue of homelessness deserves more... As I have previously stated, while issues are requiring long-term solutions, clearly there aren't enough of this. 1.5 million Aussies are food insecure at the current moment, and while dumpster diving is not the optimal end-all be-all solution to this issue, currently it needs to be permitted, as many people have nowhere else to go. While dumpster diving could be discouraged with reliable and safe alternatives in the future, now it is needed. On top of that, the second speaker also tries to say if we do not discourage dumpster diving, more security is needed in businesses to avoid property damage. What an incorrect statement, as dumpster diving, the activity, does not provide any risks to businesses and provide them with property damage. It is stuff that these businesses have actively discarded. If property damage occurs because of dumpster divers, this is not to do with the activity itself, but because of how the people act. If dumpster divers act responsibly and in the law, then there are no reasons why businesses should be affected by this act. Unless businesses have specifically stated they do not want dumpster diving, and then it is the even then it is the person taking part in the activity's fault. 
for ignoring these signs. Finally, the third affirmative the third affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that dumpster diving does not have enough effect to affect the economy. However, this is wrong because, as my second speaker has mentioned, $20 billion are lost every year through throwing out goods, appliances and food wastage. Dumpster diving can prevent even some of this and can reduce the consumerism-based lifestyle that is society today. Remember, at its core, dumpster diving provides those who don't have access to what they need another way to find goods and helps their quality of life. Why discourage something that does no harm, only good? Our first speaker has discussed the amount of food that goes to waste in Australia, almost all of which goes through dumpsters at some stage. If we have 1.5 billion people with food insecurities all around Australia, why are we removing a way to pay these people to find food by discouraging dumpster diving? He also spoke about how dumpster diving not only allows the needy to have access to food, but also other household goods. Many furniture items and other items are thrown away by the more fortunate of us to make way for new products. However, why let these products go to waste when dumpster divers could have access to these useful items? Our second speaker spoke to you about how allowing dumpster diving reduces the pressure on the government to support less privileged people. If these people can support themselves by benefiting off dumpster diving, then they have happier lives and need less support. Finally, he discussed how dumpster diving allows things such as material goods and foods to be recycled. So, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we, the Navy 15, strongly argue that dumpster diving should not be discouraged, and if possible, should be encouraged. Dumpster diving helps the lives of the less privileged and helps the environment through the reduction of waste. It is so rare for us to be given the opportunity to take a step forward without the potential of taking a step back. A dumpster diving, it would be a true tragedy if it were not to be encouraged.